This video will discuss the capacity intervals within Planet Together APS. And so what is a capacity interval? Um, according to uh, Planet Together, a capacity interval is essentially the calendar um, that the resource can run. So you'll see here on my resource number one here, I have a capacity interval, this green block, it's called first shift, and it runs from 7 a.m. in the morning until 7 p.m. at night. It's a 12-hour interval, meaning jobs can run on this uh, resource during those periods of time. There are two types of, there are two main types of intervals in the system. Um, there's a recurring interval and there's an, uh, an occurrence of one uh, single interval. So we call these, if, inter if intervals are in a recurrence with each other, we call them a series of intervals. And if they're an occurrence, it's just a one-time thing. Um, it's just called an occurrence. So you can see here, it might be hard to tell in the video, but there's a hash, um, a, a hash mark on these intervals which lets you know that they're in, in series with one another. And if I right-clicked on one, I can open the single block series, or I can, uh, sorry, I can open the single occurrence, or I can open the series and modify everything um, in this capacity interval. So first we're gonna dive into one interval, then I'm gonna show you how to apply it to different resources, and I'm gonna talk about some of the different types of intervals like offline and clean out and overtime. <clears throat> so to take a look at your interval settings or to change the time span, you simply right click on one of the capacity intervals and open series. And here's your capacity dialog. It's telling us that this is a normal online capacity interval. It's starting at 7 a.m. going to 7 p.m. so a, a period of 12 hours. It's utilizing one person uh, and so its capacity hours are, are 12. We'll talk about number of people in a second. Um, you also see the name up here, which you can change. And it's basically like a calendar uh, in your you know in your email clients. It's got some of the similar rules, like occurrence, uh, recurrence, sorry. In this case, we're recurring weekly and we're recurring on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We're skipping Saturday and Sunday. There's a lot of little nuanced uh, features in here. It lets you very um, specifically, help plan together where you want to have capacity. Now I'd like to talk about number of people for a second. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll go through these uh, settings first. So number of people. Uh, for right now, the block is default uh, to set at one person. In these operations, this job is saying, use all the available people that I have available. So right now, I only have one person. That job's going to run eight hours. But let's say I have now two people assigned to that shift. Bump it up to two. I'll hit apply. And you'll notice the job shrinks in half. Um, since two people are doing the work now, it gets done twice as fast. You can think about it like that. So that's, uh, so that's how number of people work. This is helpful when, um, if you had a multitasking resource or shift um, or, or labor capacity uh, a pool, say you had five people working on this resource and one of them calls in sick. Um, or, or say, for example, you have two people like, like I'm showing here. One of them calls in sick, you'd open up the interval, bump it down to one person, save and close, and it readjusts the uh, schedules to compensate. So I'd also like to talk about how you assign these uh, capacity intervals to different resources. I'm going to open up the schedule a little bit here. You'll see I have resource one and two. They both have first shift on them. But what if resource two runs a different shift than resource one? What if resource two runs second shift? Or it runs first and second shift? So let's go create a new capacity interval. So to do that, I'll come up to my scenario tab here and go to my resource configurator. I'll jump over to the last two tabs here. We have capacity intervals and recurring capacity intervals. Since I want this interval to keep repeating every day, it's gonna be a recurring interval. I'm gonna create a new one. Double click to open it up. Let's call this one second shift. We're gonna run from 7 p.m. 7 a.m. 
12 hours still. Recurrence is going to be weekdays. So I'll save and close that. Now you'll see on my list I have a first shift and a second shift. Now we need to assign that second shift. So I'm going to move this window out of the way just a bit so we can see the schedule. You'll notice a button up here says assigned resources. If I go to first shift, I'll see that first shift is assigned to resource one, two, and three. So I'm going to take it off of resource two, save and close. You notice the intervals disappear on in resource two. I'll come down to second shift and I will assign to resource two. And I think I said in my example I want first shift and second shift on resource two. So I'll come back to first shift, reapply resource two, save and close. And there you have it. We now have first shift and second shift on resource two. Okay, so that's all great. I know how to create a schedule. I can zoom out here and, and see that um, I'm repeating except for on the weekends. So it's doing everything I told it to. But now let's see how jobs react to capacity. If I move this job out a little bit, when it gets to the end of the day, say on Wednesday, I'm, I was only able to finish half of it, what happens is it spans the gap here. It's still running. Um, so now it's runtime. Technically, let's see, I can add a label here. I want to add. Resource operation here. Run span. Call this run and we'll call this block length. So you see, if I've got this back here when it's all on Wednesday. Um, it's running for eight hours. The block length is eight hours. As I move it over here, um, it's still running for eight hours. It's just the block length expands on the screen like you see it. The expansion is just to show that it's spanning from Wednesday to Thursday and it's finishing Thursday. It's still running for eight hours, but it's just spanning that gap. This is useful to see when, um, when jobs span a day or, or span a weekend. Now let's play around with the different types of capacity. If you go down to the bottom of the Gantt, you'll see a capacity tools um, little button. You can also find the button here, capacity tools. If you click it, uh, you'll get a uh, menu bar at the bottom here. So let's add some off time, uh, off time intervals. There, there's different types of intervals. There's online, which you see in green here. There's overtime, um, which is still online time. It's just uh, you can assign a different cost to it. There's potential overtime, pretty much the same as overtime, just has a different kind of look to it. There's offline time, which uh, the, the resource would be down for. And there's clean out, which the resource is down and nothing is uh, allowed to schedule over a clean out interval. So let's see how each of these react. So let's add an offline interval. We're going to add one to uh, resource one here. It's easy to do. I just click on the offline interval and I click where I want to put it. And let's call this um, break time. Save and close. And I can now drag it where I want. So let's put it right at the end of the day here. And now what happens, if my block gets into the break time, it has to span the entire time. Whereas if I move my break, if I can move my break a little earlier, I've got this four hour break in here which is pushing my job through the whole day. So that's a very long break, but I think you get the idea. Jobs can span break time, or job operations can span over break time. So let's get rid of that break time. Just right click on it, delete. Let's add a clean out interval in the same manner. Click clean out, drop it on there. Name it clean. I think I can adjust the size of it like this too. 
So a clean out is saying that nothing can schedule over the time. Once you hit a clean out interval, it's almost like resetting the resource. So if I try to drop this job onto this capacity interval, it's going to push it afterwards. So that's nice. You can create a gap in your schedule of a clean out where nothing, can, nothing is allowed to schedule. And I can simply right click on that and delete. I can also right click on it and assign the resources. So if I want to apply it to all three of my resources, save and close. And now you see it's on all three. I can zoom out a little here, show you. I can also delete from all resources. And I guess the, the last thing to mention about capacity is if I don't like to see it on the Gantt, I can kind of minimize these green bars. There's a slider down here, and I can just slide it to the left, minimize it all the way. Or I can make it very large if I want to read, because you can also put notes on these guys. If I open the series, and I say uh, notes, let's see. Notes will also appear, so you can... Um, you can set custom notes for each capacity interval if you want to see that. Bring that down and hide those. And uh, that's a little video on capacity intervals. Feel free to comment on the video. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at Plan Together. Thanks for watching.